Analog Gear has a lot of mysterious dials and functions, but if we know what's going on behind the scenes, we could recreate these elusive analog effects with just some regular plugins. So if you've ever wondered what the Neve Portico's depth function sounds like, or maybe how Mag EQ's airband affects your signal, and you want to quickly apply these effects using plugins that you already have, I think you'll enjoy this video. But real quick, if you want to get the most out of your productions, check out our Sage Audio membership. It includes 50 masters a year performed by your own dedicated mastering engineer, access to Sage Audio community for unlimited mix reviews, one-to-one -one mentorship, hours of educational courses, and so much more that I'll cover at the end of the video. Let's start with a simple one and recreate the Mac EQ4's airband. So this EQ is pretty popular, but it's primarily for this airband. Looking at the graph of its curve, you'll notice small default boosts at 37 hertz, 150 hertz, and 675 hertz, all of which are only about a dB. To emulate the 40 kilohertz airband, we could use our regular EQ or the stock EQ, and with a stereo high shelf, boost 10.6 kilohertz by 3.5 dB, with a low Q value to emulate the mag EQ with the airband set to 5. Now, if you want more or less of this effect, simply amplify the output. The Mag EQ4 boosts all of the frequencies once the air gain goes past 5, which is similar to simply increasing the output of the plugin. But what's nice about emulating the gear is that you could simply ignore this strange feature and just amplify the band that you actually want more of. So let's listen to the 40kHz air band set to 5 being emulated with the Pro-Q3. Next up, let's create the Neve Portico's width and depth functions using mid-side EQ. So the frequency response for the Portico's width and depth functions could be found in its manual. Changes to the depth occur on the mid-image, and changes to the width occur on the side image. Taking a look at these presets that I've created, you'll notice how they match up with the manual. With a little tweaking, the amplitude, the center frequency, and the slope could all be matched for the low, the low mid, high mid, and high options for both the width and the depth. Then if you wanted to vary the amount, simply highlight and turn the bands up or down. It's pretty easy to emulate it, and it could be done with just about any parametric mid-side EQ. Also for any members, I'm going to add these presets to the membership soon so that you could download them. Let's take a listen. Next up, let's recreate Solid State's Fusion Unit. Now for the Violet EQ, it's incredibly simple. You just gotta center a band on 300Hz for the low shelf and use a lower Q value. For the 90Hz option, the filter is gonna reach slightly over 2kHz. For the 20Hz option, lower the center frequency and use a slightly higher Q value until the filter reaches unity around 1kHz. It's a very similar situation for the high shelf. It's centered on about 10 kilohertz with a relaxed Q value until it reaches unity around 500 hertz. Then you could just adjust it up or down to determine how much you want. Really, there's nothing too complex going on. When it comes to the vintage drive function, it's also shockingly simplistic. To emulate a low density setting, use Saturn 2's warm tube setting with 0% drive. Their harmonics are gonna match nearly identically. For the high density option, Use Saturn's warm transformer setting with a drive of about 37% and a mix of about 23.5%. The harmonics aren't identical, but they're incredibly close. Let's listen with Saturn's saturation and the EQ enabled. The sound's going to be pretty close to what you get from the Fusion unit. Let's see what we can recreate from the new SPL Channel 1 Mark III. So SPL is known for its transient design, but something like this could be created from free plugins. Flash by Waves Factory is a great option. It achieves a similar effect by utilizing compression methods and phase interference to emphasize the attack or sustain. This plugin is even subtle enough to use on a mix bus, so let's listen to it with max settings and notice that we're only getting a few dB of amplification. The de on this unit is more interesting though. 
Instead of frequency-specific compression, phase cancellation is used to attenuate sibilance. This results in a very smooth sound when it's compared to regular de-essing. To emulate this, either duplicate the track that you want to affect or set up a bus and first invert its phase using a stock utility plugin. Due to complete phase cancellation, you should have no signal when they're both playing at the same time. Then, insert a linear phase EQ and isolate the range where you're noticing sibilance. 24 dB octave high and low pass filters are going to work well. Then you could add a dynamic bell to expand the isolated range whenever there's sibilance. Lastly, blend the phase inverted track in with the original signal. It takes a couple of steps, but this accomplishes the same thing and it produces a very similar sound. Let's take a listen to it on some vocals. Caught your reflection between the ways. Caught your reflection between the ways. Let's check out the new Neve Master Bus Transformer. Now, I gotta be honest, there isn't too much here that's hard to emulate. The shelves are very similar to Fusions. The lower the frequency on the low shelf, the higher the Q, and the higher the frequency on the high shelf, the higher the Q value. Now, I created some presets to match these shelves, and I was gonna add them to the membership, but they're so simple, I don't really think there's a reason to do that. The same goes for the compression. I only needed an initial negative one dB threshold, a harder knee, a ratio of 1.64 to one, and to select the mastering style to recreate this unit settings. Additionally, I could use the internal sidechain high pass to mimic this unit's high pass, and then vary the release time between 100 milliseconds to 1.5 seconds to mimic the compressor's release times. For the high ratio, the starting threshold is lowered to negative 1.7, the knee is slightly harder, and the ratio is increased to three to one. I'll add these compressor presets to the membership, but it might take less time just to dial the settings in yourself during your next session. Let's take a listen. Last up, let's recreate some highly sought after reverb units. So I was thinking about showing how to recreate a Pultec EQ with regular EQs, but honestly, I'd just recommend downloading Analog Obsession's free Pultec EQ. Also, I'm a big fan of impulse responses, so I thought I'd show you how to create your own. All you need is a drag file or a very short sample of white noise. Using this stock test oscillator, I'll select white noise and then export a second of it. Then I'll trim it down to as close as one sample as possible. Ideally, I'll isolate a section with a positive value. This could then be run through hardware reverb units, EQs, and even plugins to create an impulse response. Now, if you don't want to do it yourself, some engineers have created impulse responses for the Brickast DM7, the Lexicon 224, and some other units. But let's try running this white noise sample through a plugin and then AB the results. I'll show you the plugin sound and the impulse response that's been loaded into a convolution plugin for a blind test. Let me know if you could pick out which is the original and which is the impulse response. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to get the most out of your productions, check out our Sage Audio membership. When you sign up, you get 50 masters, access to our mixing, mastering, and pre-mastering courses, with new videos being released each week, and one-on-one -on -one mentorship with Sage Audio Engineers. In the community section, you can see how your mixes and your masters hold up by getting helpful feedback from us and your fellow engineers. If you need tracks to practice your mixing and mastering, you could download unmixed multi-track sessions, unmastered mixes, and find additional support with our mixing and mastering templates. We're adding more to the membership every week, so I definitely recommend signing up soon to get your 70% discount.